Okay, so SteamOS is a very popular operating system. It's used on the Steam Deck and also you can use it on lots of mini PCs. So I thought I'd set about getting it to run on a Raspberry Pi. If I wanted to install SteamOS on a mini PC, I would search in the browser for SteamOS recovery. And you can see there's a Steam support page for this. And they do have a page for installing SteamOS on other devices. They do support AMD hardware with an NVMe drive, which the Raspberry Pi doesn't have. And it's also designed for an X64 device, so that method wasn't going to work. And that's because the Raspberry Pi uses an ARM-based processor and the Steam Deck uses an X64 processor, like on an old PC or a laptop. ARM is more the type of processor you expect to find in your phone or your tablet. It's changed a lot recently with ARM-based Windows computers and also MacBooks, but you'll find that compatibility on those with older systems isn't good. So the base of this build, I've used Twister OS, and the reason I've used Twister OS is not for the various different themes that it has, but because it has Box86 and Box64 support. This is designed to play Linux games that run on a traditional PC or a laptop, but also we have Wine as well, which runs Windows software. Loads of other features as well, really, really good operating system. And so this is based on Twister OS because the Wine and the Box86 and the Box64 setup is quite complicated and I've tried it before and never really got it to properly work. But if I press the Windows key on this and type Wine, you see that we've got loads of components of Wine. So this is all about running Windows on a Linux device but it still needs the box 64 element to it because this is the wrong hardware. So we've got the wrong operating system and the wrong hardware to run Windows games. But amazingly, it still works. So if I was to type in Steam, I've actually got two different installations of Steam here. So this one is the Linux version of Steam designed for x64 computers. So this uses Steam's big picture mode. And as you can see, I've got various different games on here. And I'm controlling this with a controller. This version, which is the Linux version, which uses Box64 for compatibility, Brotator works great. So full screen, as you can see, I've been playing a game on this. This is really quite enjoyable. And it's lovely and smooth. Oh and works great. It's basically avoidance. It's got like an auto fire system. So you've got to pick up things that are like power ups, like that green stuff. And avoid the prickly trees and things like that. But it is, yeah, it's a nice, simple game where you can either use the controller, no buttons, just avoidance. And then eventually you'll have cleared the level. If I quit out of this, So all of this works absolutely fine. Takes me back to Steam. On my controller, if I press the B button, I can go back to all games. But what I'm actually gonna do is shut this version of Steam down and use a different version. So if I press the Xbox key, I get this menu up and I can get a power and I can exit Steam. Because the other version, and the version I've had more success with, and also especially with Windows games, is, if I press the Windows key and start typing Steam, this one here that doesn't come up with any extra titles. Now this will actually launch in Wine, which is like a compatibility layer for Windows games to run within Linux. Very well maintained, really, really good system. But a lot of games don't work, especially on an ARM-based device, so we're, we're doing two things that are wrong here, but amazingly it does work. So all of these games are designed for x64 or x86-based computers, and they're also Windows, but we're in Linux, uh, and let's try Flat Out 2. You still have the big picture mode if you want, this is the more desktop version of Steam. So I have a hit play, and I've already done the configuration. and all the menus and everything are nice and snappy on this. And I played this before on the Pi, but I can't remember what method I was using before, but it wasn't good. And this actually runs pretty well now, all things considered. And even though this is an old game, it still looks great. And 
I haven't lowered the graphics all the way down. I could obviously lower the resolution, but this is still playable. Hopefully space is, uh, yeah, handbrake, I think, or in second place. But as you can see, it's coping with that. And this game, there's quite a lot of elements that go on in it. So lots of the damage and the environment around you and everything. Let's take this guy out, even though my car's probably a lot lighter. Oh, oh, straight through a tree. So you can see that's working. Let's quit out of that. Takes us back to Steam. Let's try a bit of Half-Life 2. And I haven't needed to change anything with compatibility on this because it's running through Wine. It thinks it's on a Windows device. So if I hit play. Now I have lowered everything on this. Uh, well, it's running in 720, but every setting I could lower, I've lowered. But I think it still looks all right. And if we jump into a game, this level's particularly good. I was playing this last night. I deliberately didn't save it so I could play it again from the start. Really good uh, level design. So, oh, and it does this weird thing where, so my keyboard's not working through this at the moment, but if I press the Windows key uh, and then I go back to it, I think, yeah, now I'm, I'm moving. That went better than last time. I took my uh, bit of a fast approach. Let's get some health back. But it looks all right, doesn't it? Actually, it's probably, people are gonna to wanna to see FPS, aren't they? Which isn't gonna be great, but let's give it a go. If I press the Windows key, can I go back to just the Steam menu? No, it looks like I have to quit out of the game. Oh, I'm going to play the game first and then I'll go back and do the FPS. Helicopter. Pigeons. And from here, the level design's really cool. You've got to go across. So a train comes so you can't go through this gap. So the train comes in, and even with the train coming in, it's still playable. And the train is cool because it provides a way of getting over to the other side. Oh, been shot at. Yeah, this is cool though. If I get one of the, the fins. Nice. It's obviously not going to be perfect, but it's working. And let's go to settings. It just works the same as it would on Windows. It's a bit slower. In-game and the FPS counter. You sometimes find this FPS counter doesn't come on, but we'll give it a go. Funny, you showing up on this day in particular. Oh, it's done the same thing with the WASD keys not working. So press Windows, click on the window again, and now we can move around. And we're getting 20 FPS. Oh, let's we jump over as well. The city on foot. Oh, okay, let's get in there. Sixteen FPS. Woohoo! Eleven FPS. There's a lot of uh, things to destruct. Oh. But I'm just amazed to get it working at all. But if I wanted to get this better, what I would do is lower that resolution of the desktop. Because uh, at the moment, yeah, it's running at 720. Uh, and it only lets you run it as native. And I think that's something to do with Wine. But if I was to lower the desktop resolution down to say 640 by 480, that's going to improve that. So let's try a bit of Portal. And the same with Half-Life 2. I've just lowered all the settings pretty much as low as they'll go. So everything is very, very low here. So let's jump into a new game. 
and we can move around and look around waiting for the next instruction there we go so I don't know about 30 FPS something like that Just pick this up and pop it on here to open the door. Excellent. And we're into the next game. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. Burn so let's quit out of that. And I've got one more game that I've installed on here. And that was Sonic Adventure. So this is a PC version. I think I picked Windowed because it seemed to run a bit better. Look at me running at 60 FPS. Okay, so not 60 FPS in game. But again, another thing is working. I don't know if I want to play it at this low frame rate, but it's working. Where's the, uh, this way, this one. The frame rate's so low that when he does this move, he just appears in another part of the screen. Oh yeah, 17, that. Can we whiz up the stairs? The perspective is awful. So I think I'll probably do a separate video on how I installed it and got it to this state uh, because it is Twister OS underneath all of this. So if I was to go to shut down and log out, now you can see it's Twister. So if I pick XFCE session and the login I haven't changed so it's still Pi and Raspberry. So login. I'm back to Twister OS uh, with all these icons on the screen, all these things that I've installed. And it might run better in XFCE because it's a lighter operating system. The only reason I was using KDE Plasma is because that's what Steam OS is based on and I wanted to make it look as similar as possible to SteamOS. SteamOS uses Arch Linux, this is using Debian because it's based on Raspberry Pi OS, but it's the same principle. And we'll see if the theme twist is still working after I've installed KDE Plasma and if it's broken anything. So let's go for my favorite Twister XP and enter to continue and log back in again. Brilliant. So you see there's some more games on here, some of them I didn't get to work, I think some of them I haven't tried. I was disappointed I couldn't get Grand Theft Auto to work. So if I launch that, what's it going to try and run it as? Let's just try and launch it. Is it going to launch the Linux version with Box64 or is it going to launch the Wine version or is it going to launch nothing? I see Steam is running down here. So this is not the Wine version. So this one actually works a bit differently in the if you're running a Windows game, it uses the compatibility layer within Steam. So it uses Proton. So if I go to my library and say I pick Grand Theft Auto Vice City, not sure why there's two there. Well, I have installed it twice because I've installed it in the Wine version and also in the Box64 version. So if you go to the COG, and I didn't need to do this within the Wine version of Steam, Go to properties and you've got compatibility and you can see here you can change all of these. If I pick Proton 9.0-4 and then go back and hit play, it's now going to download that version of Proton to make it compatible. So basically work as a Windows game within Linux. Okay, it's just finished. Oh no, it's downloading more. Proton 9, your game is ready to play. Okay, no, it's crashed. So I've got to restart it. If I try control that F1, that will let me reboot. Trying in wine now to see if that will work. You can see it's loading up. And I have had it get all the way to the game and then it crashes in the game. But this game even is troublesome to run within Windows 11 on supported hardware. Okay, I have to skip the music. Yeah, so if I just do start game, 60 FPS, or nearly. It looks like it's going to work great. Time for 30. 
<laughs> and even this looks brilliant. <laughs> and then it crashes. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so I'll probably do a separate video just showing how I set this up, just if people are interested. I'm not sure if people will want to do this because performance is pretty bad, but I just wanted to see how close I could get to SteamOS, and I think I came pretty close. It's just performance is the only letdown. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.